Because if that's the way it was, if all I had to do is call, hey, I wouldn't be here now. I would have just, I'd just be calling and doing what I used to do. But it don't work like that. Jesus is going to make it plain to you. All I got to do is call and, and, and that's it. Uh-uh. Don't believe the hype. See, that throws out the window what we've been talking about. The baptism is the beginning of your walk with God. You got to follow that up with some actions, with some works. Notice what Jesus said about you just calling. 6 and 46, or you just praising. Some people, some churches, that's all they do is sing, 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 sing. Singing is good. We have a little singing here. But that's not what it's based on. And God tells you in the Bible, he said, if you're not doing his will, Israel was messing up. He said, I don't even want to hear your song. Don't bring me none of your vows and your melodies. No, I don't even want to hear it. He said, it's an insult to me because you not serving me. He don't want to hear it. Just like he don't want to even hear your prayer if you're just ignoring his word. You can't do that. 6 and 46, what Jesus himself saying? The Savior. Go ahead. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? He don't like it, do he? Why you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? If you really believe in me, if you really going to treat me as your Lord, you're going to obey me, aren't you? See, so much for just calling, right? Jesus don't take just lip service, do he? Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the thing? So we already know Paul wasn't talking about that's all you got to do. He was really focused on whosoever got the opportunity to get on board and get saved. But there's some steps you got to go to to get to that. He kept telling you that if you would have kept reading Romans 10. But Jesus made it clear. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things that I say? Too many people think if they just call on the Lord, just call them, that that's it. Now go to Acts 19. Go to Acts 19. Because we're going to find out that calling on his name, you can have a name right to the T. It ain't going to do you no good if you're not doing what he wants you to do. And we're going to show also that when it comes to getting baptized, I said early, if you didn't understand the fullness of this and got baptized, you just got in some water. You need to get really get baptized because you just got dipped in some water that time. Like many of us have. I got dipped in some water for no good reason. But when I found out the truth, hey, I got baptized according to the scripture. And Paul is backing this up here. Here's some people that got baptized, but they didn't, they didn't have the whole story. And believe it or not, they knew more of the story than the average person that get baptized nowadays. But they still didn't have enough. 19 and 1. Acts 19 and 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, uh -huh. finding certain disciples. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Uh -huh. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. See, now they got part of the story. See, that's the bad thing about getting partial of the story. They got part of it, but they was doing the best with what they had. That's why the Lord is sending you somebody that can guide you the rest of the way, if you're sincere. Because they was working with what they had, but they still didn't have enough. That's why the Lord led Paul to them. So Paul talking to him, he said, you got the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, we ain't really, we ain't got to that. We ain't heard of that. And he said, so he said at verse 3, go ahead. And he said unto them, until what then were ye baptized? Now they ain't got baptized. He said, well, you got baptized. What were you baptized unto? Go ahead. And they said, unto John's baptism. And they said, unto John's baptism. Now we know John had a legitimate baptism. You know it had to be legitimate. He baptized Jesus. He didn't want to because he said, I ain't worried. Because he knew exactly who Jesus was. He said, man, I ain't worried. Unlatch your shoes. Let Jesus said, just go on and do it, bro. You know, we got to take care of this. And he baptized Jesus. So we know his baptism was legit. But see, people down the road wasn't giving people the whole story like John gave them the whole story. John gave them the story of repenting and believing in Jesus. We read Matthew 12, uh, Matthew 3, Jesus, John was even telling them about Jesus. He said, the one coming after me, that's the one you're going to have to listen to. And if you don't listen to him, he's going to burn you up with unquenchable fire. That's what he said. So he preached Jesus to them. But see, they didn't get that whole story. They was missing something. 
So they told Paul unto John's baptism. What did Paul say? Verse 4. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. See, he said, now, uh, now Paul knew John knew what he was doing. He said, well, you know, John baptized, he baptized with the baptism of repentance. But not only did he say repent, he taught the people what? Saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is, on Christ Jesus. See, John preached Jesus to the people. He didn't say just repent and don't believe on Jesus. No, he told me I had to believe on Jesus too. He told them the whole story. You need to know about Jesus, but you need to know about repenting as well. You need both of them. And if you lack an either or, you just getting dipped in some water if you get baptized. So he said, look, John truly baptized with the baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. So now these people have been baptized. What did they do when they got the whole story? Verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. See, they got baptized all over again. But they had the whole story now so they could do it in righteousness. When they heard this, they got baptized. It didn't say in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, did it? Nope. Didn't say that either, did it? Because we already found out that was the name, didn't we? Jesus. And Paul did the same thing Peter did, did They all knew what name it was, brothers and sisters. So when they heard this, they were what? Baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. See, they got baptized again. This time they did it right. In the name of the Lord Jesus. They knew what it was all about. Go ahead, verse 6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. See, the Spirit came on them, and they started speaking with tongues and prophesied. It didn't say they started ripping and running. Notice when the Spirit come on you, you got some information in your mind. They wasn't just babbling some gibberish. No, they was, they, all of a sudden they got the word, they had it down. See, God can do that, he can do that immediately, or he can do that gradually. Either way, when you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to know some stuff. That's what it is. It ain't about making you feel good. So they had the Holy Ghost. But now, to show you, some people want to just grab hold to the miraculous stuff. They want to do great stuff, and they, wanna, they think if you just use the name of Jesus, it's okay. Without the, the, the other part of this lesson, the walk, the walk that follows. So skip down. Let's look at some of these brothers. Skip down to verse 11. And go ahead. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons, and the disease departed from them. Now, granted, Paul was doing all kind of miracles. He was healing people, casting out devils left and right. They, he wouldn't even have to be there. They'd take a handkerchief for Paul's body, take it, and it would heal people. That's some miraculous stuff, right? And God can do that. God do that when he chooses to do it. Everybody don't do it, but God do it in his own time. But it's not for everybody to do it, and it's definitely not for somebody to do it, and they're not even, they not even walking with God. You got preachers on TV say, look, we healing and we casting out devils. But then if you ask them, say, well, did you, did you tell the people to start keeping the law? And start, oh, no, we, we don't have to do that. You, so you didn't tell them to stop eating pork and all now. So you're doing all this miraculous stuff, but you can't, you can't do a little miracle like stop eating pork. Something is wrong with that. But that's what's going on. That's what's going to go on here. These brothers going to see the miracles and want to be a part of that, but they don't, they don't want to walk with God the right way. They don't want to stop sinning. Stop breaking the law. So that's what's getting ready to happen here. They saw Paul doing it. Go ahead, finish that verse. And the evil spirits went out of them. Uh-huh. Then certain of the vagabond now, Jews. Now this verse 13. Now they seen Paul doing it. Like Benny Hinn and them seeing in the Bible. So they think that, look, they did it. I'm just going to, that's all my ministry is. It's about healing people. So he go around knocking people out. Bam, bam, bam. Supposedly healing them, right? Let's see. Go ahead. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had spirits, evil, I mean evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. See, now you had some, now these, these boys, they religious. See, just because you go to church don't mean you got it right, though. They was religious, that's why they jumped in this arena like this. They seen Paul doing, they said, yeah, we're going to do that. That's, that's the bomb right there. We're going to base our ministry on that. We're going to have a healing ministry. 
Let's go do it. They went to do it, right? It says, certain other vagabond Jews, Exodus, took upon them the call over them, which had evil spirit, the name of the Lord Jesus. But now they had the name, though, didn't they? See, if the name was all you needed, they on point, right? They straight as an arrow if the name is all you need. This is what people think just because you call on the Lord. We already read what Jesus said. Why do you call me but don't do what I tell you to do, right? So that obviously is not enough. So they called the name. If the name was all Jesus wanted you to have, you would be okay. They would be okay here. They called on the name of the Lord Jesus over this evil spirit that was in this guy. And then they said, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. So they identified the right one, right? They said, this is too serious. We ain't going to make no mistake about it. We're not talking about any Jesus. We're talking about the one that Paul is preaching. Now, Paul was preaching him, right? It seemed like it should work, right? Let's see. Go ahead. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew. And chief of the priests which did so. Go ahead. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? See what, see what the devil spoke back through the man. And the devil said, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. See, the Lord had a devil rebuke you when you out of line. Because, see, the devil, had to, the devil got to listen to God's servants. So the devil even told him, said, look, you, you right, you got it right, I know Jesus. You got that right. We're going we're gonna to put that in the plus column for you. Paul, you got Paul right. You got that right. But you got a problem. Who the heck are you? See, that show you calling on the name don't mean nothing, brother and sister, if you're not walking the walk. It don't mean nothing. Too many people believe it do, though. I don't care. You could be screaming to the top of your lungs the name of Jesus if you can't stop eating pork and remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, and the other laws, committing idolatry and fornicating, you can forget about it. You can scream all you want to. See, these brothers were screaming. They said, look, we adjure you. That means they was, they was emphatic about what they're talking about, right? That's what they said. They were serious. See, that's why it don't matter. You will have some people in church tomorrow. I mean, they will be emphatic about what they're talking about. You would think, they, well, they got to be right. They are serious about this. That don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing, just some talk. These brothers was emphatic, right? That's what it said in verse 13. They said they called over them which had evil spirits. The name of the Lord Jesus said, we adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. They going to adjure the devil. But the devil spoke back and said, look, at verse 15, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Verse 16, go ahead. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on, leap on them and overcame them uh -huh. and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Boy, they got out of Dodge, didn't they? The man who had the spirit, who they caught. Now, this show you, you could even mean good. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with trying to cast out a devil, right? So... Because people say, well, you know, if your God know your heart, he know your intent. Well, they wasn't really trying to do nothing wrong, except they wasn't servants of God. Paul was casting out devils. They tried to do it. They didn't know it didn't work like that. You got to be a servant of God. That's what come first. Casting out devils and doing all this miraculous stuff don't come first. Repenting and keeping his commandments. Try that first. Then if God wants you to do anything major, you can do that. But do, the, do your homework. Do the basics first. That's what they didn't do, right? And they got ran out of town. The Lord let the devil loose on them. And if he did the same thing today, you'll see Benny Hinn them running. You'll see them running, their clothes coming off. They be getting beat down. The Lord just not letting it go down like that right now. But he said he going to judge everybody at judgment. He's going to separate the wheat from the chair. But the same thing would happen. 